if there's one member of the Montreal Canadiens who could use a restart to this entire season, it's Jeff Petrie. He very much looks like a shell of himself. But we're approaching the second half of the year. Maybe there's a chance he could find himself, find his game. Who knows? Um, I'm going to start with Rick. Do you think Jeff Petrie can find his game for the second half of the year? I'm already getting a head shake. That doesn't look good. I, I'm I'm really concerned about uh, Jeff Petrie. Uh, I know he seems to be skating better, but his overall game and decision making, and uh, you know, even from things like you lose your helmet and you stay on the ice and draw a penalty because you didn't know the rules, or I, I just I don't know where his mindset is. I don't know if he's really, really excited about being part of this rebuild process of. Uh, what he senses is going to go on in the organization. I don't think he's, uh, he's, he's happy with it. He's not playing like he is. And uh, he's, he's really struggling. And, you know, uh, that being said, I, I always talk about the importance of having good partners and, and guys that have good chemistry together. And, you know, he's played with a number of guys. He's been given a, you know, opportunity to try and get his game back, but uh I really see him struggling in so many ways, and I, I don't know whether we're going to find the, the Jeff Petrie that we found uh, in other years because uh, it's not happening, and I, I, don't, I don't see it, uh, the, you know, with, with what I've seen to date, him getting it turned around on the final stretch. I'm actually going to push back on that because I think his decision making since he came back from injury is significantly better than it was earlier in the season, and it started to get better before he went down to injury. And then I believe uh, COVID protocol as well that kept him out longer. The whole getting his helmet taken off and then playing the puck, honestly, if you look at that replay, I thought was the best decision that he possibly could have made because the other decision I think that's was, the best decision he's made all season because exactly. he had stopped the, he stopped it was the high danger chance delay. from happening. It was a long delay after he lost his helmet. He lost his helmet and he like looked around for – a few seconds. Well, he probably like, couldn't hey, find it because the guy here. ripped it off and threw it. He did. Right? Like, he that should have been the penalty. But the the Shit. other option in that situation was let the other team get a breakaway, right? So to me, a two minute penalty is nothing compared to a breakaway. You just look, and they killed the off average that team too. doesn't even get a single scoring chance on a two minute pen, a power play, right? So you're trading a high dangerous scoring chance for maybe a scoring chance. I think that's just the math to me checks out there. And I thought that was a good decision by Jeff Petrie. And you look, he scored, he finally got on, off the Schneid, scored a goal. I think good. things are turning around slowly for Jeff Petrie. It's like a cruise liner, right? It's not going to be right away because things were so off the rails at the beginning of the year. But the underlying numbers are still there. I wrote about it for the Gazette earlier this, this year. Uh, the difference is that over the last couple of years, the Canadians spread out tough minute assignments between Weber and Petrie. And Essentially, the third pair was not hyper sheltered, but this year with Weidman and Niku, they've really, really sheltered that third pair. Those guys are just not playing top end minutes against uh, opponent, uh, great top end opponents. They're playing mostly in the offensive zone. So you look at like Chris Weidman's numbers are spectacular, but it's because he's yeah. not asked to do anything difficult. Whereas the load on Petrie, Sherratt, Savard is very severe this year, and they're struggling especially when they're like off mentally, right? And making bad decisions. So of the players that actually play regular NHL minutes against top end competition, Petrie's numbers are still the best on the Canadians decor. The offense has just been non-existent. So overall, there's a lot of signs to me that say Petrie's going to be okay. Might not turn around fully this year, but I'm not that worried about him. I'll push Dude. back a bit on the helmet thing because I think his head's not in the game for whatever reason. And when he lost his helmet, he was like, look, at it, there's no penalty. And I think the team stopped playing too. And I think that created the, the scoring opportunity as much as anything else. But, you know, this season's been like anything they can't – there's a lot of stuff that's been happening with Jeff Peach. You know, him and Carrie Price are good friends. Their wives are great friends. They have a business together. Carrie goes into the uh, the – player assistance program at the beginning of the season. That obviously has an impact on him. Joel Edmondson, you know, Rick talked about his partner, his fantastic partner from last season, hasn't played a game all year. Jeff Petrie has spoken publicly to the media more than once about his frustration with Dominic Ducharme's system, which is, if you know Jeff Petrie, that's unlike him to do that. That just shows how frustrated he is. And I think, as I said, I just don't think his head's in it. I think he's really frustrated. He's playing like a guy who wants to get traded, I think. 
Um, you know, I heard some rumblings this week about maybe Detroit being interested in him. You know, his wife and his kids stayed back in, in Detroit when he came back to Montreal. Some people criticize him for that. I have no problem with that at all. I mean, what the Canadians aren't playing any games at home anyway. There was a lockdown here. There's a lot of things. She's, his wife has three young kids at home. You're going to be locked in a house in, in Quebec with three young kids running around. Are you going to stay home in uh, Detroit where you have family around you to help you and all that? So, but I, I just think Jeff Petrie, it's, it's I, I think he's just really frustrated. And, and I think it comes, I don't think he wants to play Dominic the Charm system. I think when he spoke up publicly, he wasn't just speaking for himself, he was speaking for other guys in the room. And he just, he's playing, as I said, I think he's just playing like a guy who doesn't want to be in Montreal anymore for, for many reasons. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if Ken Hughes ends up moving him before the trade deadline. Very interesting to see what could happen there. Let us know in the comments section if you think Je uh, Jeff Peachy will bounce back in the second half of this year. Subscribe to the YouTube page uh, for more great content. Subscribe uh, to the Hockey Inside Out newsletter and visit HockeyInsideOut.com for more.